Hello again everyone, it's Charlie and welcome back to another video on the Chatting Leeds YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing well as always. So then guys, the transfer window is now closed as of the other day. So I thought I'd just jump on and just give a little like um, review, I suppose, of Leeds United's transfer business this summer. Um, we did do a bit of business, maybe not as much business as people would have hoped and liked but we still did make some um good deals and there was a few players that did slip away as well so then guys just before i get into it please smash the like button please subscribe and let's get into it So then everyone, first up was the signing of left-back Junior Firpo from Barcelona for a fee of around £13 million, which for me is a bargain. I think the potential that Firpo has got in this Leeds team is amazing. Um, I feel like we've not seen enough of him yet for us to cast too much judgment. Um, I feel like the link-up play with Harrison is um, starting to get there. Obviously, he did miss the Burnley game through COVID. But apart from that, I think the games that he's played against Crew in Cup um, and against Everton, I thought it was um, really solid as well. Um, the scum game, we can't really judge anyone on that game. I think everyone as a whole was just poor on that day. But hopefully, third part, um can continue to grow in to this season and hopefully he has a great impact on our starting 11 going forward guys next up then guys is one that really doesn't class as a signing since as we've had him for a few years now but we um finally made the permanent signing of jack harrison from man city for a fee of just 11 million pounds an absolute steal um, if I'm being deadly honest with you. Um, I think when we first got Harrison on loan, um, I thought he was poor in his first season. Um, but I think each season he has just grown and grown and grown. There's even talk amongst Leeds fans that he should be in the England setup, which for me just shows his development over the last few years. His first touch is absolute filth. Um, and the assists and the goals last season were amazing from him as well in his first like full season in the prem um i think is an amazing um talent and for me he should be an ever present in our starting 11 as i said earlier um about furpo hopefully them two can form a real good partnership down that left hand side um, and i hope that harrison has many more years at leeds because I feel like eventually he is going to be some player. Well, he already is, isn't he? Let's be honest. But I think the fact that he could potentially get better is actually frightening for other teams, I think. Up next then, guys, it's two potential signings that Leeds could have made, but ended up going against it. Um, first up, we've got Conor Gallagher from Chelsea, um, who caused quite the stir online um, as... He apparently, I don't think this has actually been confirmed officially, I don't think, but apparently he actually turned up at Thought Parch, had a medical, um, but then in the end he chose to go to Crystal Palace. Now, for me, that shows a total lack of ambition, lack of desire to work under a world-class coach in Bielsa, and he'd rather go work for a fairly new coach in Patrick Vieira, who, yes, was a world-class player in his prime, but as a coach, he's not really proved himself yet. So the only reason that I can see that he chose to go there is obviously for more first-team football. But for me, he should have come to Leeds and fought for his place in our team. And I think he'd have thrived under um, Bielsa. And I think he'd have had an amazing season at Leeds. But... Um, that's on him, I guess. Um, obviously, I know he's kind of started off all right for Palace. He scored twice against West Ham, didn't he? But total lack of ambition for me there from Conor Gallagher. Um, on to the next one, which was Lewis O'Brien, um, which was kind of a strange one as well. Um, at first, I think it was a name that kind of was a bit underwhelming, but then having seen clips of him and hearing things online it did sound like that may have been a really good signing 
But we had two bids turned down from Huddersfield. I think they valued him at about seven, eight million pound for each evaluation. No, sorry, each fee that we proposed um, was turned down. Um, I think he ended up getting COVID at one point as well and he couldn't even come to Leeds for the negotiations or something like that. But in the end, it just didn't happen. Um, so, yeah, those two, I mean, am I, am I sad that they didn't come? No, I would have liked to have seen um, Conor Gallagher. Oh, Brian, I'm not too asked about, if I'm honest with you. Um, whether that comes back to bite me on ass, I do not know. But at this moment in time, I'm happy with the business that Leeds did in this window. Up next then, people, it is Christopher Clayson, um, the goalkeeper that we signed from Valengria. Um, now, obviously, we've signed him as a backup for Melier, and he will majorly play for the under-23s. Um, but for me, it is good competition. From what I've seen of him, he does look quite handy um, and a really good keeper. Let's be honest, anything is an upgrade from Kiko Kassia. Um, But yeah, as I said a few times on some episodes of Bite Size Leads, um, I think it's really good that Melier has got some healthy competition. Hopefully it brings the best out of him. And I think he should thrive more now as he's got a goalkeeper that is probably wanting that number one spot. He will feel... will. Place and that he is um, good enough. Right at this minute at time, I, I don't think he will be breaking in to the first team. I'm surprised that we didn't see him against Crew in the Cup. Um, Bielsa surprisingly went for a really strong team in that game. Um, but hopefully we'll see glimpses of him. But for me, he will always just be a backup to Melier. Next up, guys, is the biggest signing of our transfer window this summer, and that is the signing of Daniel James from Scum um, on a five-year deal for £25 million. Um, finally got him um, two and a half years later, but at least we've got him now. Um, I think this is a real top signing, and if what we all think is going to happen, then our attack going forward is going to be lethal, if you think about it. Hopefully, Dan James will go on our right side of midfield. I would like to see Rafinha play at number 10, with obviously Dallas kind of floating in the attacking and the defensive midfield, and then Harrison on the left with KP holding as normal. That, for me, is lethal, and obviously, of course, um, Bamford up top. That is... That is filthy. And if it works, then that has the potential to be a very good attacking line. Um, and hopefully we can cause some teams a lot of issues this season. Obviously, we did play against Dan James on the opening day. He did start for Man United in that game, which I found interesting. Um, so he knows what leads are like. He knows the intensity that we play at. I think the fact that he's a very pacey player will work in, in our hands um, and hopefully the likes of KP, Rafinha even um, can get some balls down wing for him to chase onto. Um, I think he is quicker than most fullbacks in this league, minus a few. So hopefully we can use that to our advantage. But yeah, really happy um, with this signing and hopefully he thrives under Bielsa because he's finally got his man. And finally, guys, to end this um, upload on for today, um, some quite, as harsh as it sounds, some quite good news um, from a Leeds point of view. And that was the exits of Ian Paveda and Helder Costa. Helder Costa has joined um, Valencia in Spain on a season-long loan with an option to buy. Hopefully they do buy him. Um, and Ian Paveda has signed for Blackburn on a season-long loan, but there is no option to buy on that one. So Paveda will be coming back at the end of this season. For me, he will just go back out on loan or he'll be sold permanently. Um, I can't see him getting back into the team, especially for the reason that he left. Um, I think it's widely known that he had a fallout with... Um, 
Bielsa for some reason. Probably down to the lack of game time um, and the lack of opportunities at Leeds. Um, but for me, you've got to earn an opportunity. And for me, he doesn't deserve one at Leeds. That might sound a bit overly harsh, but it's just my opinion. I have never really been sold on him, if I'm honest with you. Apart from that one game where he played well against City at Ellen Road last season, I don't think he's ever offered anything as a starter or on the bench. Even in the cup games where you'd expect him maybe to take advantage of that opportunity and play well, he just done um, for me. So I will not lose any sleep over him leaving at all. Um, as for Helder Costa, slightly different in in sense of when we first signed him, I was really happy for proven player in the championship and in the Prem as well. Um, a good reputation, obviously. I know Wolves fans had, had said that if he gets injured, then it's kind of hard for him to come back, which inevitably turned out to be the case. But I was initially really happy. But he started off last season well. He played really well at Anfield and he scored two goals against um, Fulham um, as well. And I know he scored at the Emirates as well, halfway through the season. But apart from that, every time he comes on, he's absolute garbage. Um, for me, he offers no creativity going forward, no pace and just no effort at all. He always gives away a cheap free kick as well as soon as he's on as well. Um, so, yeah, again, I won't be losing any sleep over losing Helda Costa, but I wish them both all of the best. It may have just been Leeds and the club just wasn't right for them. Sometimes it happens in football and I don't hold anything against them. I'm just glad that they're out of our club now and we've got good options in the starting eleven and on the bench if needed as well, especially with um, Somerville and players like that that are coming through under 23s. Um, hopefully they'll um, have an opportunity as well. So yeah, that concludes the end of this upload, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please smash a like on it as well. And please subscribe if you're brand new. I know that there's a lot of people recently who are watching and not subscribing. It's free for you to do. It really helps me out. So please press the subscribe button if you enjoy my content. And I will see you in the next upload, guys. Thank you very much.